muscles. Now, muscle to me is one of the most unappreciated things in a, in a kitchen. Um, the good thing about muscles, and we used to probably go through 20 bags of muscles a week in the a la carte restaurant for broth. We take those muscles, we take shallots and garlic and the wine, the usual stuff, and basically make muscle broth. Uh, sometimes, to be honest with you, the muscles were discarded uh, depending on what they were and the quality, or we'd use them for a lot of different things. But we would take the broth and the chefs would use it to cook them. Instead of fish we made, we'd use muscle broth. It's sweet. It's got that fish, it's got that nice shellfish, it's got that earthiness, but yet it's got that little delicate sweetness that to me, just with certain dishes we did, just made it a lot better. So, you know, so we, we would actually spend time making mu muscle broth market. Uh, we would make demi glass and we would actually take the demi glass and uh, put it on sheet trays or hotel pans, dice it up, to keep it behind the line so it was finished. So it'd take a couple of cubes and finish off certain dishes. So. Really, and that's what cooking is about. You know, when you're cooking out of a car in a restaurant, it's really all that mise en place, and then what I call your finishing station. Even in competitions, it's that finishing station. Do you have shallots, garlics? Do you have herbs? You know, do you have a great olive oil? What do you have that's finishing? You know, so every chef that ever worked the pass in any of my operations had to have what I call the finishing station. And it could have been foam guns. It could have been for whatever dish. But there were garnishes. There were fried herbs. There were candied uh, fruits. Candy lemon, candy limes. Every dish went out with edible garnishes that made sense, harmonized the flavor of the dish, um, and had texture. So a lot of times too was that texture. You got that oil perfect. Wow. Good job, give her a round of applause. These are my famous chef tongs, the only tongs that I use. I was telling John I had to bring them to the airport, of course. Today, security, I got stopped. <laughs> and the two security guards continued to argue of whether I can have my cooking tongs. I told them what they were for, you know, yeah, you cook, you cook the food. <laughs> nope, no, nope. looks like a weapon. I said, really? So the other guy came over and he got involved and he's kind of said, no, give it to them, they're tongs. <laughs> he goes, I oh, no. <laughs> So the other guy comes back and goes, no point. But they all—they tried to take them from me. You know, I had to cancel the whole trip. It would have been hard to go. So I keep a lot of these because they do. When I went to Europe, that wasn't even an option. They take wrap them from me. Okay, so we got the poached shrimp. We're just gonna warm up our muscles that we took out. Now, in this version, the more modern version. A little plate. You 30 somethings, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes this dish uses crawfish as well, uh, fresh crawfish. You know, what we talked about earlier too about food and where our country is going. Sometimes, did you know the majority, a lot of restaurants in Louisiana, which is an incredible food town, some restaurants are using crawfish from Asia. You know why that is? The biggest problem is the supply because what they rather do in Louisiana is sell it, ship it, FedEx it to all the restaurants, they can get more money than they can get in their backyard. And to me, that's, you know, when I look at how sad that is, when you think about something that's native to the, I mean, Louisiana, crawfish, man, they just go together, and yet they're buying stuff from Asia because everything's getting shipped out. The same as oranges in California. You know, the best naval oranges, all get sold. You know, in Florida and California, you're almost getting secondhand fruit. So, you know, that's the kind of thing chefs need to stand up against. And, you know, when you get in the industry and you get some influence, hopefully you can start doing some of those things. Uh, this is, the dish goes with rice. So this is rice that we actually cry back. And again, for banquets, you know, Said I'm a good fan of the cry back to some degree. Um, we used to uh, even take chicken confit. We used to take uh, shank meat. And we would actually cry back it. We roll it out and then uh, refrigerate it, let it get hard, and then basically we would cut it into these beautiful strips or planks. Uh, put it in the warming box, some butter, season it, and then come service time, lay that strip of confit down. 
we can lay the sliced chicken breast down, then the surrounding vegetables, the sauce. So, you know, very cool modern presentations, yet cooking real food and, and sticking to real food. So, so this dish, what would usually happen is, especially classically when they serve rice, um, they'd serve it in a mold or, you know, sometimes a dome mold. And they would take it and put it, put it poached slow. Now, the interesting thing about European cuisine on a whole is they spend a lot of time with plate presentation. They're, even to this day, they're still not as contemporary as we are. Um, French people, on European people, things are still plated individually. But the interesting thing is when you watch a European eat food, they take everything, a little of everything, and put it in their mouth. We spend a lot of time in these incredible presentations everything flowing, going together, but when we eat it, and I'm sure you did it as kids, you separate, you save the best thing for last, I'm all those mashed potatoes, man, I'm saving those for last. So you're eating all this food, but the, the thing about cooking and developing dishes, and you know, that's why I bring up this story, is things on a plate by themselves can taste incredible. But you have to ask yourself, do they go together? You know, cooking a lobster perfectly, making an incredible blueberry coulis is nice. Do they really go together? Does blueberry sauce go with main lobster tail? Yes, no? <laughs> who, who has her for a uh, student? So anyway. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> You didn't get my lobster in love, man. But, you know, so the two components, they go good together, but at the end of the day, if they don't taste good together, why would you put them in there? But you only know that if you eat the food too. So if you continue to eat everything separately, so if you're developing a dish, you know, if you got fennel on there, if you have some kind of herb and different kinds of fish, and you're starting at different two sauces, taste it all together. And if something's not right, if you're tasting, yeah, I don't know about this dish. Chances are some of the components perhaps just don't match. You know, the food may be all be cooked well, it's all may be good, but there's probably something wrong with your flavor combination. So you have your great holiday sauce? Where is it? Chef, I've been back here like for a damn hour and a half while you're talking. <laughs> you know, you send me many holidays and then uh <laughs> Blame the dish or <laughs> so this dish traditionally too would uh, go with some asparagus peas. So basically, it would go with the mussels, um, poached shrimp or crawfish, poached mussels. I mean, you know, not a bad dish necessarily. Um, you know, definitely have a nice poached sole. There's a little muslin in there. You have these beautiful peas or uh, asparagus. Take this incredible fish sauce somebody made. So if we had the salamander, what we would do is not pay it first with the, uh, the white wine sauce here, and then block, and then the little hollandaise, and then we would uh, gratin it underneath the, uh, the broiler there. back there for an hour plus. Round of applause. Great hour. Don't you have lost one. You know, classically, this is a nice dish. You know, it, it's, it's got flavor. It's poaching for me. You have all the components. But again, if you want to take that dish, modernize it a bit. So we take our rice, which this time we compress into the cryovac. And when I talked about the sole, as you can see from here, all that flavor, so you know, people say, ah, oh, you're poaching in the bag, you're not getting the same. But this is poached in the bag.